Good evening, I'm Edward Senek. Kathy Thompson. And this is the 2008 Blue Water Rotary Club International Day Parade. And did you know that this parade started 70 years ago? That kind of ties into the parade's theme, Ed, which is celebrate our past, imagine our future. And in this parade today, we'll be able to look in the past as we celebrate the former mayors of Port Huron, and these dignitaries will be honored as our grand marshals. But first of all, let's go out there to our man on the street, Bob Beaton. Bob? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at the Rotary International Day Parade. Just at the very beginning, we have the police cars and the sheriff cars and the band coming up here shortly. This is a very exciting evening, and I'm Bob Beaton, your volunteer man on the street for this parade. I'm just delighted to be with you, and we're going to be talking to some parade participants, as well as some of the crowd in the very near future. So stay tuned. The only time I've ever heard these sirens is when my wife is driving the car, and they're usually in the rear view mirror there. But uh, we have some people that we'd like to thank over this sound, don't we? We do. First of all, Signs Plus, Vic and Joyce. And Signs Plus has given us access to this huge crane. And we have a cameraman way up there to get the wide shots of the street. And Main Street Garage, would you see the sign right there? And special thanks, of course, to Dale McDonald and Tom Clark. And then finally, Jets Pizza, that uh, Sandy over there at Jets has been so kind to us here at Channel 6. Now also, this parade is brought to us by the Rotary Day, uh, the Rotary Club, excuse me. And who are those members there that we like to especially thank? Well, there's a parade committee, Val Maher, John Adair, Connie Harrison, Jackie Hanton, and Gary Leroy. And they'd like to thank the following sponsors. And these sponsors, of course, will all have banners, and they are the ones who have made this parade possible. And they are BMJ Engineering, Stewart, Bove, and Whipple, Hanson Pro Music, Citizens First Foundation, ENA Credit Union, Port Huron Hospital. And they want to especially thank Pepsi for providing bottled water to the parade participants, as well as the following sponsors, Port Huron Ice Hawks, Baker College, Marsha Haynes, Prepaid Legal Services and Whaling, Holiday Inn Express, Marge Cop, Jeff and Audrey Beckett, Betty Veen, the Smith Family Funeral Home, John Hauser, Fred Roberts, and of course our very own John Adair, who is who and he and Connie Harrison has made sure that we've got these booklets in, in front of us. And that sound I hear, what is that coming from? It's a Big Red's marching machine, Ed. What a great way to start the parade. And the Big Red marching machine has performed in many parts of the country, such as Chicago, New York City, and even a couple of times at Disney World. Let's take a listen to them under the direction of Daniel Grimm. Now the band boasts about 180 members, and I think they average around how many performances a year? 55 performances a year for this band. Amazing. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Great night. Pretty well. What are you doing? Oh, how this many, is great. How many you got, lady? I can't tell. I'm here we've got about 200 or 40 songs for the fall for the band, so it's going to be a great year. That's awesome. Now here's a big float that's coming up uh, down the head there. And I think this is our mayor float where we're saying a happy birthday to the city of Port Huron. This is our Grand Marshal one, isn't it, Kathy? It, it is. And on this float are the mayors, the mayor, Brian Moeller, and the past mayors of Port Huron. Mark Neal, Lori Sample Wynn, Steve Miller, Jim Ralkin, Mary Brooks, and Tim Lozon. 
And if you look at all those collective years that they had for mayors, it's very impressive. I mean, I think Tim Lozen, he started in 1977, and we go all the way up to present. Grand Marshal Steve Miller is walking behind the float. Now coming up, as we see in our shot, that also our shot out here again is thanks to Science Plus that has put Chris Orell way up there in our camp. But we see the Budweiser Clydesdales, and for some reason I'm getting a little thirsty here. <laughs> now only the finest Clydesdales become part of the Budweiser team. The physical requirements are strict. They have to be six feet tall and weigh between 2,000 and 2,300 pounds. Okay, and I think that Bob Beaton has somebody out there he wants to talk to. Let's see if he has somebody. How many do you have here this evening? Well, we hitch eight, we carry ten with us. They're the other two are down the tent. They're awesome. Huh? Guys, average two thousand. Yes, sir. That's a lot of horse. <laughs> Thanks so much. You have a good evening. A Thank you, Bob. Those uh, Clydesdales, by the way, they stand, how tall do they stand? Six feet tall. Six feet tall and weigh between 2,000 2, and 2,300 pounds. I'm going to hang out with them and look really thin. Plus, I think that they all have to have white feathering on all four legs and on their cool. feet. And a black mane and black on the tail. That is very impressive. What is this? Uh, An, oh, the Budweiser course. truck. The, the Budweiser truck. <laughs> Clydesdales came in those or not? I wouldn't know, but I bet there are a lot of people who want to know just what exactly <laughs> is in that vehicle. Oh my gosh, three huge Budweiser trucks with Budweiser and Clydesdale. And just, just the painting that goes onto those trucks is also very impressive. It's just amazing, it's gorgeous. The nice thing about it is also, Kathy, is that it's not raining. Last year, what happened last year? We were rained out. Yes, there was so much rain that actually the parade was, was canceled, and we, had, uh, we couldn't do it. And we might tell our audience that this parade, it's sort of like deja vu. I, I thought after last year I wouldn't have to say sesquicentennial for another <laughs> 100 years, but... We are having the same floats that were entered in last year. They wanted a chance to participate and they'd spent so much work on making the floats that many of the patrons requested a repeat. And uh, we're also, we're on the corner of what? We're on the corner of Glenwood and, and Main, Street, Main Street, AKA Huron Avenue. Which is also Huron Avenue. We got about 72 degrees here. And we have coming up. Oh, this is the Parrot Head Club, Ed. Now, what exactly is the Parrot Head Club? Jimmy Buffett fans. And they don't just sing Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett music and drink margaritas. They really do a lot of good things for the community. I believe they're an international crew whose uh, members form two clubs, one from Sarnia and one from Port Huron. And they look to the doing civic and charitable functions provided to this Port Huron area and also in Sarnia. Right. They have fundraising activities and they do things like cleaning up the beaches, roads, and they're a family-oriented club. Oh, is this a Zamboni? It looks like it's a Zamboni. I don't know if that cement it's has... coming to... right after the parrot heads. I think that's also to introduce the Port Huron Ice Hawks. Now, hockey fans in Port Huron have been able to celebrate championships with the original flags, and the hockey ex excitement continues that have been with previous people like the Border Cats and the Beacons. This has been a hockey town for 46 years, and the Ice, ice Hawks have really made people want to go to McMorrin. I think they're looking to finish what they started last season. The Ice Hawks kicked off the new season October uh, 17th, and, uh, well, we're Kids hoping for a winning... Kids are going crazy for some of the players. <laughs> hoping for another winning season. One of the Ice Hawk players is he's throwing hats and shirts into the crowd.
And there's their banner for the Port Huron Minor Hockey, Hockey Association. And they're skating on their wheels. And throwing candy oh, to the yes, kids. Oh yes, the kids are going crazy here. The age span is quite wide. Little tiny ones to bigger kids. Now where are your rollerblades? How come I you're not out on. I did rollerblade once. They were a gift from my daughter, and I came down the driveway and landed on the car, and I honestly had six weeks of chiropractic care, so that was the end of my rollerblade. Avery! Well, it, I should have stuck to ballet. The Nutcracker's coming up here. <laughs> yes, the Nutcracker Ballet Theater Company, which is a nonprofit co uh, corporation. They'll present their 19th annual production of the Nutcracker Ballet on December 12th, 13th, and 14th at the McMoran Theater. And there we have one of the stars of the show. Oh, she's so pretty. Matter of fact, let's, I think uh, Bob Beaton has somebody. Let's go out to him. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, there's 120 children and community members from around the Blue Water area that do that. And it moves it right on to this vehicle that we're seeing, which is the Port Huron Community Action Team. Many of you remember that drugs are trash, garbage bags. That's one of the things that they do. They're try they really are active in the community and making sure that young people, children and, and youngsters realize that drugs are trash, that it's not the way to go. And we see a sign for the Plymouth Fife and Drum Corps. And now what it's is a the Fife Ed. <laughs> Uh, that's what you do when you want to box, you get in a fight? <laughs> no. Uh, no, uh, it is a flute, I believe. Yes. And it's uh, now in its 37th season, and it consists of approximately 48 members between the ages of 12 and 18. They're under the direction of Fred, or excuse me, Jim Freedom, and they perform under leadership of drum major Janine Rowe and color guard commander Stephanie Kogo. Let's have a listen. Now this core has appeared in hundreds. I think we have somebody from Bob Beaton. Let's go over and see if Bob has someone. Would you like to pray? Wow, look at the candy you got. Where'd you get all that? <laughs> Did they just throw it to you? Oh, all right, good deal. How much have you got? That's some cool stuff too. Are they good, kids, Mom? We're having a great All time. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Now the core has performed where? They, they've appeared in hundreds of play, uh, parades and festivals all over the United States since their inception in 1971, and they have between 40 and 50 performances a year. They're dressed in replicas of the Continental Uniform of George Washington's lifeguard. White wool breeches, ooh, that would be comfortable, and waistcoats and a blue Continental coat trimmed in red. Very snappy. <clears throat> now, just in case that uh, you haven't had something to eat, that we'll see coming up behind these, this, the band, we will see the McDonald's car with a big M on it. Look right past that truck and there it'll be coming right there. Here See, look who's driving. Ronald McDonald is and it's happy 40th birthday to the Big Mac this year. That, look, that is like a little smart car, like a little smart truck, very tiny. Oh, oh I think Miss Bob Beans. Bob, oh, he's chasing Let's see what Ronald happens. McDonald. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. You know who I am. You should know her name. This is Connie. Connie Joe. Connie, Joe. Connie does house. everything. She rocks the house. <laughs> All right. Connie's cool, right? She's way too cool. All right. Have a good one. I think Bob was out there clowning around on that one. <laughs> oh, here's the Mercy Hospital float. And remember the Jetsons, as uh, portrayed in this float, sponsored by Mercy Hospital. They're high-tech marvels inspired our childhood days of what the future might hold. And at Mercy Hospital, that future is now offering such high-tech services as advanced cardiac scoring, 
the area's only radiation therapy services for cancer treatment and access to some of the most sophisticated medical experts for joint replacement. Here's, this is the Bay Rama Fish Fly Festival float ad. The paddle wheel boat carries the 2008 Queen, Haley McFadden and her court, Stephanie Hopp and Alex Martin. Looks like they just arrived from the Caribbean islands and are bringing back some of that flora to our area. This is a great float. It's so sparkly. You know, I have to ask you, do you know how many fish flies it takes to screw in a light bulb? No, how many? Just one, but the rest, 10,000 or so, are there to admire his work. Good job, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish that joke would have worked, though. Um, the St. Clair County Health Department float is up next, I believe. Our water, our future, ours to protect. Yes, and they're talking about the rivers, lakes, and streams and reminding people that they are a valuable resource in our community. Recreation water activities such as boating and fishing have been enjoyed here for about, you know, well over 150 years. And we got to work together to protect our waterways in order to keep them clean and safe. This is a great float, too. Oh, oh now, this is that we have many political people in the parade today because there are elections coming up. This is Foltz for Sheriff crowd. And Ray Foltz uh, is a, a former special agent for the FBI. He is also an Air Force veteran and he and his wife Linda raised two children which was uh, Brad and Brian in St. Clair County. And as sheriff, that he plans on serving the citizens of the St. Clair County, of course, if he's elected with superior law enforcement experience with his integrity and accountability. A lively group. It goes on and on and on. They have babies and dogs. I don't know. And, oh, another, here's another dog dressed in a coat, a Ray Foltz coat. And now there's a huge motor home. They're throwing candy to the crowd. That's enough. It's all gone. You're fine. You're fine. Up ahead, we see the Fabulous Feet Dance Studio. And of course, we know that they're uh, dedicated to giving quality instruction in a caring environment. And what I'd like to know is that, of course, here they've been walking all this time. How it's amazing that they're feet. fabulous feet, right? <laughs> I mean, of course, that's what we were getting to. Of course, we value all of the students and parents, uh, and, and they challenge their students to value their talent and develop their capabilities to the fullest, to strengthen their self-confidence and create a lifelong love of dance. They start at two and a half years old to adult. They're doing hip hop now, I think. Sounds like hip hop to me. Oh, and there, boy, there's a lady my age Maybe out Bob there. Maybe Bob Eden has somebody out there. Bob, are you out there dancing? Hi, are you with this group? this group where are you from and how many are there we're fabulous feet dance studio um there's probably about 30 of them right now dancing where are you from we're from fort gratiot right. enjoyed the parade tonight oh absolutely You'll come again right every year all right thanks so much thank you bob i hear a horn out there from a truck with beautiful flames on the side this truck is bringing us the first Nazarene. Well, this is a group of walkers. They want to let you know that their custom garage float is a look into the future and the theme for their Bible school. Oh, here's another horse from our early logging days. The logging days, uh, and also I think I see a chicken out there. <laughs> Oh yeah, it is a walk big walking chicken. This is going to be Mortimer Lumber. A huge truck full of wood. And I think Bob Beaton has somebody out there. Bob, what do you got? Up. How long would you like to do it? About five more minutes. About five you're having fun. Absolutely. All right. There it is. You're well done. 
Thank you, Bob. And then we see lots and lots of wood on here. Coming up. We even have a miniature pole barn representing the present day. And then they're showing the latest in um, synthetic decks and porches. Rails. This parade is becoming an annual tradition for the staff at Mortimer's. And this one right here that we see is the House on the Moon. It gives all the departments a chance, this is what's nice, gives all the departments a chance at Mortimer to work together and interact and have a great time bringing this presentation to the community. They did a wonderful job. You come over here. Including the cat in the hat down there. Oh, from Dr. Seuss. The kids are having a great time along this parade route. I wonder, it's a lot of interaction with the people in the parade. I wonder if the cat in the head is looking for my wife and I, because <laughs> we're thing one and thing two here. That uh, Now, the cat in the head is leading off from where? From the uh, Bridges float, I believe? Yes. The Bridges is celebrating Port Huron's spiritual heritage while looking to the future of the church. Bridges is a new Wesleyan church with a contemporary expression on the gospel in, Port, in downtown Port Huron. And, and that's, that's the sound that you hear is coming from their flow. Yes, that's, their flow. that's unusual. You're going to find friendly people, a casual atmosphere, and the opportunity to explore faith in a fun and exciting way. Oh, this is great. It's sort of like a concert. Bridges meets at 11 a.m. at the corner of 4th Street and Wall Street. And again, of course, we would like to thank our wonderful location that we have here at Main Street Garage. Oh, Main Street Garage has been so good to us, and that's Dale McDonald and Tom Clark. And Signs Plus, Vic and Joyce, they donate the green so we can get wide shots. And also, the kids get hungry doing this shoot. And Jet's Pizza provides the food. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, this, look at th what's coming, Ed. This is gymnastics. This is great. It's a great float. There we see it now with the, them actually doing <laughs> gymnastics while moving. Unreal. It is the All-American Flames Gymnastic. It is a premier gymnastics program housed in the Blue Water area's largest, best equipped, and coolest facility. They have 20,000 square feet of red hot flipping fun within the cool <laughs> confines of air conditioning, which is very important for me. They're, they're inviting everyone to come feel the heat of the All-American Gymnastics. It's for preschool, recreational, competitive gymnastics, or cross training. Now, I've never seen a float like this, so I don't know how they're doing this with moving oh. and there, is that the balance beam? And not only, yeah, not only are they doing the balance beam while the vehicle is moving, as we can see there, but then we also have all these flips and tumblers coming through here, walking on the hands. Oh, this is a great shot. Look, some of they're doing splits. They're wa oh, wa look at that girl walking on her hands. And again, I, I say this every year, but these these youngsters have been doing it. For a long time now. I mean, yes. they've been marching starting way back at the post office till finally they come here to uh, Maine and Glenwood. And they still have the same exuberance they I, had when they started. I think Bob has got one of them. Bob, what do you have out there? We do gymnastics, birthday parties, field trips, anything fun it's at our gym. Where are you located? 2915 Lapierre, right? The old Semco building. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And right behind him is the way we're bringing the uh, banner for the Stewart, Beauvais, and Whipple. Uh, they have been a public accounting firm that has been around since 1948 with a staff of around 20 employees, and they are a longtime parade sponsor. And here we have the Michigan Peach Queen. The Peach Festival is celebrating its 77th year. It's held over Labor Day weekend. The festival has fun run, carnival, car shows, parades, arts and craft shows. What? And other events there, right. Now, the, the Peach Queen for 2008 is Courtney Spiegel, and Courtney is 18 years old, and she is from Romeo, and she'll be attending the Oakland University in the fall, pursuing a degree in public relations. 
No, who's coming now, Ed? Well, I'm trying to look on the side there. and then the SC4. SC4. St. Yeah, St. Clair Community they're College. They're celebrating their 85th anniversary this year. And right behind them is the Jesus Freaks. And we mean this nicely. Yes. <laughs> they are representing the street preachers of the Jesus movement in the 1960s and 70s who might often be seen walking on the streets wearing a sandwich board with a message on it. And some people referred to them as Jesus Freaks. Uh, these preachers loved Jesus and were not afraid to show it. And this can, the same thing can be said of the young teens in the Jesus Lighthouse Youth Group. They're just everyday young people who are proud of the fact that they have a personal relation, relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, look at these antique cars. These are gorgeous. Now, in case you didn't know, Kathy, that an editorial in the New York Times made a reference to an automobile on January 3rd, 1899. And it was the first known use of the word automobile. Until then, they were known as horseless carriage. 1899. 1899. And another interesting fact is April 25th, 1901, it was the initiation of license plates. New York became the first state to require license plates by law, and that was in 1901. Owners of automobiles were required to register their names and addresses. Well, let's see if uh, Bob has pulled over somebody. Bob, what do you got out there? There he is. No, we're off. What well, goes around comes around. Electric again, huh? <laughs> Electric again. Uh, this is a um, car was made in Toledo, Ohio. All right. And come a long way. Well, that's what the manufacturer was. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you much. And that's as she pointed out, was an electric car. And it's amazing how long electric cars have been around. Like the a handful of different makes and models of electric cars were exhibited in Chicago, like in 1893. And it was in 1891 that William Morrison of Des Moines, Iowa, built the first successful electric automobile in the United States, 1891. This blue car is gorgeous. And look how it's like a backseat driving. Do you see that? <laughs> it does my, look like my wife would be able to do that. Seat. She's real yes. good at backseat driving. You should get that for your anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I, if there is one after yeah. that statement. <laughs> we have a singer, Amelia Paulson from the Grand Old Opry to Nashville Star. Do you realize she's only 18 years old? She's very good looking and she's a good singer. She's I, been singing I, since she was four. That's what I heard. She's won various uh, singing competitions throughout Michigan, including recently being adult semi finalist for the 2008 Crash and Cruise in East Point. She's especially proud of performing for the Ice Hawks at the Hawks Den after their home games. We might hear her on the country charts and country radio in the future, Ed. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, coming up here is the Bars Boogie Bus. It's a residential care. Yes, Bars Residential Care is an adult foster care facility located in Fort Gratiot. Family owned business, and they've been operating for over 30 years. Today they've com combined the past and the future with the names of their residents along with the names of their staff proudly displayed throughout the float. And the theme song for that entry is We Are Family. But also we see Robert or Bob Wiley for Drain Commissioner. Another candidate. Um, he's running for drain commissioner in St. Clair County and he plans to promptly address drainage issues and educate the residents on clean watershed. He's currently the building official in Fort Gratiot. Now I see here coming up is the Great Lakes Academy of Hair Design.
they offer classes in hair design, nail tech, and skin care. And if anybody needs more information on that, they could go to their website, which is www.glahd.com. It's a great car. I'd hate to take it to the gas station, though. St. <laughs> Clair County 4-H Royal Court is here. Oh, and there's a whole float coming up. Um, we have the 4-H Royal Court King and Queen, and the Queen is Ashley Yuakowski, her court. Emily Sovey and Sarah Mensker. King this year is Dan Jackson, whose court includes Justin Justin Warchuk. And who's the Duchess this year, Ed? It's uh, Jessica Yusikowski. Uh, her court includes Miranda Jerlecki and Lori Rax. Uh, the Duke this year is Jeff Rumenap. The Princess is Jenna Hyde. And her court includes Taylor Yusikowski. They've Yusikowski to all of them. Yes, <laughs> and we, Natalie Moderate. It's great. Now the Salvation Army is coming right by us right now, which has always been sent to disasters locally and nationwide, including Hurricane Katrina, Rita, and the forest fire in Newberry, Michigan last summer. This is always our hats tip to these people oh. for all the work that they have done uh, which has been founded by William Booth such long ago I think there's over 30 million a year that are aided by some form of services provided by the Salvation Army now this is a really stunning float this black it's from Dutch's outpost it has motorcycles on it and uh, they're reminding us of their upcoming fundraiser called bike night which takes place on Saturday, August 2nd. There'll be a poker run to raise money to benefit the Shriners Hospital. Look at that bike. I mean, look at that. That's amazing. Now, this stagecoach, I believe, is coming from the Machinist Union. And, you know, that's one way to save gas that you were talking about, right? <laughs> I mean, that'll do it right there. I don't know how much they I'd get like to, to I don't know if I want to feed six horses, though. <laughs> Six horsepower, they got it right there. <laughs> Those horses, they look like they're kind of tired at the end of this. And is this the Overland um, stagecoach? I'm not sure if that is. But coming up, I see a little car going by which says Bob Johnson on it. And further down the road, I think, is another dance uh, team. I think it may be Main Street Dance Connection. Yeah, it's located on Military Street in downtown, and they also have another location in Marysville. They have competitive dance teams as well as recreational classes for age two and a half through adult. Festive float. Oh, and then we have more um, people walking, well, girls the walking dancers. with pom-poms. Kids on the street here are dancing. <laughs> well, I think Bob might have found somebody unless he plans on dancing. Bob, what do you got? More happy spectators out there. Okay, Napa. Now this is this is my field because I always count on having auto parts here, <laughs> and uh, they have the professional staff that you can come and see anytime for your farm, fleet, marine, auto, and heavy-duty truck parts. And I was surprised that this is where NASCAR fans get their parts. It's, it's located on Lapeer Road. This and is a this glittery float. This is really pretty. The Gift of Life, Michigan. This float represents the Gift of Life, Michigan, based in Ann Arbor, an organ and tissue recovery organization that provides services necessary for organ donation. 
The float was built by the Saunders family of Richmond, Michigan in memory of six-year-old Kylan Saunders who passed away four years ago while waiting for a liver transplant. So sad. Just signing the back of your license isn't enough anymore. You have to have a heart sticker on your license or state ID to be a donor. And currently there are over 3,000 people in Michigan alone waiting for a transplant. Now our banner, which is being swept by the wind, is the ENA e e Credit Union, which again, we thank all of our sponsors today who have made this possible for us. And again, we also thank, as always, Main Street Garage for, uh, for this wonderful spot that we have here with uh, Dale McDonald and uh, Tom Clark. And then also we thank Jets Pizza. And Signs Plus. For this wonderful shot that we see coming right here, right now from Chris Orell on the top of that. Great band, Windsor Optimus Youth Band. Let's listen. Now in its 43rd year, the Windsor Optimus Youth Band began as a special project of the Optimus Club of Windsor. Probably representing the greater Windsor area. throughout Windsor and the Essex County as well as other parts of Ontario and Michigan. is the March of Dimes Jail and Bail, celebrating 52 years in Port Huron. March of Dimes, of course, works to save babies from threats to their health, and nearly a half a million babies are born prematurely each year in the U.S. It's a great thing, and my grandson was one of those babies that was born prematurely and was helped with surfactant. One of the things that the March of Dimes Jail and Bail does. They have all kinds of outings. They have, have, have a lot of fundraisers, such as uh, the Jail and Bail golf outing, and I believe even Bob Beaton has somebody out there. Bob? I'll go, I'll go. We're here for March of Dimes Saving Babies. All right, Hello. that's great. How many of the are you today? Eight, I think eight it's eight of us cops. All There's right. six, six uh, jailbirds. Have you arrested anybody yet? Couple, yes, couple. we have couple. <laughs> what was the offense? Yes, unruly group. It was unruly fun. group. All right. Well, turn them in. Get big. High bail. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Seeing here is going by uh, was the uh, state representative Phil Pavlov. And the visiting nurses float is up next. Shoe the flu. Let the VNA help you. I love it. <laughs> And the Visiting Nurse Association and Blue Water Hospice are, Hospice are joining the parade for the first time this year. The marching contingent is made up of the staff, family, and friends of the Visiting Nurse Association dressed in nursing uniforms from various time periods. And right followed by is right there those lions, the Port Huron Lions Club that have been serving Port Huron for 88 years. There's, they say, they say eyesight is the greatest gift. Please donate organs so someone may benefit from your kindness. The motto of the Lions Club International is we serve. Now the Chris's dance studio is coming up next. Oh, look at, they did get a shot of that. Is that, a, what is that That's hound dog? dog? Is that a beagle? Dash hound, isn't it? Oh, is it? It's kind of low to the ground, but it looks good in pink. There we are, Chris's Dance Workshop. It's a local dance school and has been offering classes in the Port Union area for 20 years. They also offer classes in ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, and lyrical. Love the fuchsia.
And again, you can't ask for a better day to be out there and oh. marching. I mean, that's this it's is just absolutely perfect wonderful. weather for it. And a lot better than last year. Now coming up is uh, Tim Donnellan for the St. Clair County Sheriff. Uh, Tim Donnellan. Career law enforcement officer, lifelong resident of St. Clair. And let's see if Bob Beaton has somebody. Bob? No, I guess I just like them. They just like them. They're really big, aren't they? Uh-huh. Biggest horse you've ever seen? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Now, Lieutenant Donnellan is out here, and he's joined by his wife, Amy, their five children, and, of course, their many performers. Oh, they're shooting us with squirt guns. <laughs> so much for hair and makeup. Wow, we... We're lucky we didn't get hit on that no one. Kidding. They are shooting people. Boy, this is a huge entourage. Here's another car. All in now, yellow shirts. Now, this is what I was wondering is that the first bunch came by squirting people. The second one has pails of water. Is that what's in there? I, I mean, hope not. <laughs> I like the one? candy better. <laughs> yeah. Hit me with some candy, not water. And we also see out there that there are not only people out here that are supporters, but we also see some dogs are supporters, too. They look too. like drug dogs. German Shepherds. They look really thirsty. Look at them panting. And we Long have walk. We have young supporters. And look at their scarves. <laughs> even, even kids being pulled in wagons and everything. Goodness gracious, this is a whole parade here for them. <laughs> oh, now we have some great shots of the crowd. Yes, and I've heard that people have been setting up chairs here since around 4 o'clock in the morning. They've been out here to set up chairs. I came down very early this morning and drove through town, and there were chairs everywhere. Couldn't believe it. I'm always fascinated by the different types of chairs one sees. Look at that cute Pomeranian. And again, it is wonderful that we get this shot thanks to Science Plus who has put uh, our cameraman way out there. Oh, oh, sorry, they're in the parade. <laughs> Oops. Don't get There's a shot place. of Chris now coming right there. I wonder if Chris is going to give us a wave. Thank you, Chris. That's one job I don't want. I'm afraid of heights. Well, back to the, on the ground, we see the Trinity Lutheran Church. This uh, float is decorated with a cross within an arch. And they, are, they have past alumni students as well as current students with the float. On the float, they're going to be the current valedictorian salute of, sorry, valedictorian and salutatorian. It's easy for you to say. It's, <laughs> he obviously didn't make it. <laughs> now, this is this is a very interesting part, is that they have been around for 137 years. They were established in 1871. Amazing. Now, coming up next, we see the Cub Scouts of America Pack 171 from the St. Mary Catholic Academy in Howard D. Crawl Elementary Campus. Oh, and they have a trolley too, Ed. And one of the things, there are three specific objectives with scouting. And they are character development, citizenship training, and personal fitness. And it, Boy Scouts is a year-round program for boys 11 to 17. And what is their motto? 
be prepared. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> be prepared. It's a program of fun o outdoor activities, peer group leadership opportunities, and a personal exploration of career, hobby, and special interest. All designed to achieve the Boy Scout of America's objectives of strengthening character, personal fitness, and good citizenship. And the Eagle Dollar and Discount Truck just went by with tons of flags. More German Shepherds. Oh, look at this. This huge elephant. Now, my wife would say that's what I look like in a mirror reflection right there. <laughs> But I what does she know? <laughs> Let me see. Do you think this is a St. Clair County Republicans? Yes. Yes, it is. Bolts for sheriff. And what's interesting is that uh, the elephant in itself, how it became a symbol, is that it was started just from a cartoon that was printed way, way back, I think in 1874, that, uh, that said that an elephant was running away from the donkey, which is the Democratic donkey. And that has stuck ever since. Now, coming up next is the Gospel Crew. Shaking it up. Kimball Calvary Gospel Church. They do not look like they have walked all this time. Uh, the kids are encouraged to carry on and keep the faith related to God being the past and knowing that God, in God they have a future. Kids come and join this group free of cost from all parts of the community, from all churches. This is their 10th year being involved with this parade. Now, I don't know if you hear that or not, but that sound that you hear. I do. Coming up is the authentic antique circus calliope, which was built around 1900. And it's a rare 53 whistle national, which is the largest of air calliopes. And at one time, it was in the fun house of the old Eastwood Gardens Amusement Park in Detroit. Also, and it was for many years owned by the Detroit Edison Company, and they used it for parades and other special events. And 20 years ago, it was pur purchased by Carl Borsodi. In fact, this one, his daughter, Vicki Borsodi Banks of Brown City, Michigan, is playing it. And you know, the calliope is the only musical instrument invented entirely in the United States. What do we have coming up? I see a van that says Q Country 107. Must be one of radio first. It is, and we're welcome, welcoming to five great stations of radio first, 96.9, WBTI, has the best of 80s, 90s, and current. 1380 WPHM, Information Radio. The 1450 WHLS and 1590 WHLX, America's Best Music and Q Country's 107 WSAQ. These five stations are all housed at the Radio First building, which is pretty much directly across the street from it, us it on the is. corner, as we said, of Main Street and Glenwood, and they are all owned by Liggett Communications. There seems to be a lull in this parade, Ed. There is, but that always this low gives us a chance again to thank the Rotary Club members who have helped set this all up. And again, our thanks to John Adair and to... Uh, Jackie Hanton, Val Maher, Connie Harrison, and Gary Leroy. And let's go to Bob Beaton out there, see if he has anybody. Bob, what do you got out there? I have with me the owner of Main Street Garage, and we really appreciate you uh, allowing us to set up out here in front of your place. What do you think of the parade tonight? Well, I think it's wonderful. It's uh, for Port Huron. It's uh, actually probably the longest parade I've seen here in, in many, many years, like 30 years. Sure brings a lot of people downtown. It does. It's wonderful for Port Huron downtown. It certainly is, yeah. Do you know any of these people right here? This is my daughter, Tina. Hello. Tina, how are you? Hello, good, fine, good. thank you. And who's this? Hello. My daughter, Tanya. Hi. Tanya? Yep. And this is Isabel, my goddaughter. And Isabel, how are you doing? Hey, hi. Yeah, yeah, we talked to her before. How do you like the parade? Isabel, say hi. Not talking tonight, huh? No, okay. All right. Well, that's a good thing. Well, it is a great night for a parade. The sun is shining and a nice little breeze, and it's just about perfect weather, don't you think? It certainly is, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm really happy with the turnout tonight. It's unbelievable how many people are out here. Today. Pretty soon it'll be hockey season, right? Well... Yeah, it's hockey season all year long. There you go. <laughs> Spoken like a true hockey player, huh? What about those Red Wings? 
wonderful. It was a great year, wasn't it? It sure was. And what about that pickup they made? Two of them, huh? Oh, yeah. That's just up for this year. Coming yeah, here. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much again. Yeah. We appreciate right, you. Bob. Thank you. Yes, indeed. We do thank uh, Tom Clark and Dale McDonald for uh, this wonderful location out here. And again, also on that note, we have always thanked Signs Plus. That shot that we have always talked about that come from way up there is thanks to Vic and Joyce who have so graciously donated the crane for us to be getting this wonderful shots. And then our pizza comes from Jets Pizza and we thank Sandy out there who has donated that to us. So from this shot that we have, we see up ahead and it looks like it could be the Department of Veteran Affairs. I think it's a physical art center, Ed. It may be. The Physical Arts Center in downtown Port Huron, and that would be the Starlight Competitive Dance Team. Represented today are a combination of seven competitive dance teams that practice and compete year-round, traveling within the states of Michigan and Ohio. The team age range divisions from the kindergarten through 12th grade. The Starlights are celebrating their 10th year in existence. For over these years, they have captured many state and national dance championship titles. They are in the current state of Michigan and they are the current state of Michigan and national dance champions in all age divisions through Showcase America Unlimited. And the teams are coached by Christy Sharon, Lori Sharon, and Alexis DiCapua. Kelly Higgins and Lynn Hearn. Executive director is Lori Sharon, owner of Phys Fear and Physical Arts Center. Great outfits. Now this boat that we see coming up here next is belongs to Congresswoman Candace Miller. And I for one appreciate all that she did to pass the bill allowing a casino in Port Huron. Um, she's a member of the 109th Congress and she serves on the House Armed Services Committee and that assignment has allowed her to advocate successfully for keeping Selfridge Air National Guard Base open. Who are these clowns? I think oh, the well, Red Cross. They're, yeah, they're not my family. <laughs> it is the American Red Cross clowns, which is always a favorite. As a matter of fact, I think Bob might have one. Bob, what do you got out there? What are you doing out here this evening? Just clowning around. Just, just clowning around. around. Just yeah. clowning around. Can I pinch your nose? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. The American Red Cross have been serving residents in St. Clair County since 1917, and right now we see up there those Indians belong to the Black River Powwow Gathering and Historic Powwow and Historical Gathering, which uh, they have a traditional powwow in August. 9th through the 10th, I believe. And there will be native crafts, drumming, dancing, and food. We're going to see authentic 1970s native living, a native living encampment. This convertible right ahead brings us to the Miss Lake here on Shores pageant. And glamour, grace, and legendary style. Think Audrey Hepburn and Jean Harlow. These ladies are from Miss Lake here on Shores. And it's Little Miss Lake here on Shores, Leah, Angie. And Miss Lake here on Shores teens, Demi Lashbrook and Alice Erickson. And Miss Lake here on Shores 2008, Regina Ruel. The Miss Lake here on Shores program is a local affiliate of the Miss America organization, which is the largest provider of scholarships to women in the world. And our own Miss Michigan, Kirsten Hagelin, is the reigning Miss America 2008. Century 21 float just went by, Ed. And this is a spectacular one-room cottage that was built by the agents of Century 21. Oh, going crazy here is a cars, small cars, custom carts, sales, parts, and repairs, dune buggies. Oh, look at that blue one.
and I see the Ruby Family Campground. That floats appearing. And did you know, Ed, this camp is situated on 66 acres, over 70 sites they have, modern and rustic. And they have five miles of mountain bike and hiking trails. And coming up is the St. Clair County Democratic Party. What we see is the, they're saying that they're telling us that we're all in the same boat. They're accompanied by walkers wearing t-shirts. Look at this plane right here. This is a, uh, for the Experimental Aircraft Association, Local Chapter 979. This plane was built in 2002, and it's a 1940 replica of a Piper Cub. It cruises at a speed of 55 miles an hour and weighs 350 pounds. The amazing thing, Ed, is this is a home-built project that took the EA EAA members two years to build at a cost of $20,000. Now this boat that you see right here is from the Marine City Knights of Columbus 856. They have a float which is the flagship to Santa Maria which was used by Christopher Columbus during his exploration of the West Indies. Columbus commanded two other similar ships on the voyage which is the Nina and the Pinta. And the Knights of, Marine City Knights of Columbus has provided over 100 years of service to the communities of the Blue Water area. Thank you. Now look at this, another birthday cake here. It is uh, Port Huron's 150th anniversary and Port Huron Hospital's 125th anniversary. So that's why they're celebrating that. And their, um, ho the hospital chaplain, Max Amstead, is playing the keyboards. There's Max right there. Yep. Roll out the barrel. Let's have some fun. So when they were talking about the past and the future, there, now they were talking about the presents. Get it? Uh, the <laughs> present. Uh, yeah. It. Let's go to this the. This is great. This <laughs> is the Knowlton Ice Museum. Hogan and Ripple Ice. This is a phenomenal thing for Port Huron to have. Yeah, this uh, truck was actually used in but the Untouchables, and it can be viewed at the Knowlton's Ice Museum in Port Huron Township. And the Port Huron Ice, the Ice Museum is moving to Port Huron, the old Spikes building, soon. Right, and now I think they're going to display over like 3,000 items to be seen, which was used in the cutting, harvesting, storing, and selling. And I think, speaking of ice, we'll see if Bob has somebody out there cold. Bob, what do you got? Are you enjoying the parade this evening? I am. And what do you enjoy the most? The Clydesdales for the Budweiser truck. Oh my, did you see them last night? No, I didn't. I didn't get down there. Oh, I think they're down at the Atchison Center, and I think I heard correctly that they had to put carpet down to go across the bridge. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, because the horses were scared looking down and seeing that water underneath, so that's a little that. trivia. Well, I didn't know that. You learn something new every day. Yes, you do. How about you? Are you enjoying the parade tonight? Yes. And what did you like best? The, ye the little yellow the little yellow car? Well, that's cool. How about you, ma'am? Oh, I love the Clydesdales. You love the Clydesdales, too? Yep. How big do you think they are? Oh, God, they're huge. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the gentleman said about 2,000 pounds each. Oh. That's a lot of horses. That's a lot of horses. So, all right, thank you so much. What Boy. about you? Didn't we interview you earlier? Yeah, well, you want to get in here again? Yeah. Okay, do you still like the horses and want to be a policeman? Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. I'm glad you remembered. Thank you so much. Have a great time at the parade. Boy, that Bob Beaton's full of all kinds of facts. I didn't know they yes. rolled out the carpet <laughs> for the horses. But we have the Sarnia Legion Park Band. They moved to Sarnia in 1996. Pipe Major is Tom Rankin and Pipe Sergeant Terry Mills and Drum Major Bert Walls.
There are only eight members with us today. Now what we see here is Patsy Chapman, the candidate for sheriff of St. Clair County. Uh, she retired as a sergeant from the Houston Police Department after 20 years of service. She returned to Port Huron to continue raising her two sons, Joshua and James, and here she is with her family and friends. She's joined today by her mother and father, Sam and Dolores Chapman, as well as other family members and supporters. Many supporters for her also. Yeah, we just got done seeing one of her sons there. That was James Chapman that just went by. Here's a Best Buy. Port here in store 415. Now, Best Buy have seen a lot of my Best Buys. A lot of my <laughs> money went to uh, Best oh, Buy. Oh, look at the Geek Squad. They have been uh, part of the community for the past 13 years, and we'll see the uh, Geek Mobile out there, the, the Geek Squads. Now the Best Buy employees, 150 of them, have been a part of our community since 1996. And the Best, Best Buy also participates in Relay for Right Life and United Way. And other community events. Boy, those are huge Geek Squad trucks. And usually I need that kind of help from them just to set up a the computer. Large yeah, a, trucks. Yeah, you, <laughs> hey, better send it. They better send it. The, they better send it the semi with all, with all 150 guys to come to my house to help me set up a computer there. Now way down the road we see the dance academy. Dance Academy is located at 4080 Lapeer Road in Port Huron Township, and they offer dance lessons for ages two years and up, covering all areas of dance. And today they're performing Dancing Through the Decades, using little snippets from some of the most popular songs from past to present, keeping with the theme of this parade. It's a great shot. And they're all staying in formation, too, as you see them coming yes. down the way. And it's so cute because um, people along the parade road, especially the children, are out there dancing with the music. And uh, we may even have Bob Beaton out there dancing. Bob, who do you got out there? Oh, this young man, he's got it down already. I know you're going to be a TV announcer, aren't you? What do you think, Mom? It's a great parade? Yes, it is. And a great night? Yes, very nice night. What's your favorite thing that's happened in the parade so far? I like the bagpipes. The bagpipes, <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a mournful but happy sound at the same yep. time, isn't it? Yes, it is. And what's this little guy's name? This is Chance. Chance. Oh, you're kind of mesmerized. What do you see? He sees the pretty girls. All right. Yay! At such a young age, too, huh? <laughs> all right, so thank you so very much. Thank you, Bob, and thank you out there, all those participants. We see that he also has a chance that he could be out there marching along with him, but I don't. I think he's going to stay right where he's where he's at. I give these little ones a lot of credit. They've walked a long way. Oh, this is is this the Frankenmuth float? coming up I am looking at it that's still part of the dance academy right there well, they have a but then right also. right after it is the Frankenmuth float which is celebrating its 50th year this year and the Frankenmuth Barbarian Princess program is in its 45th year and they're pleased to introduce the 2008 Frankenmuth Barbarian Princess Casey Google 
with her court members, Kelsey Mayer and Elizabeth Rummel. These three young ladies will represent Frankenmuth, Michigan's Little Barbaria, not only at the festivals and events in the hometown of Frankenmuth, but many festivals and events throughout the state of Michigan. Frankenmuth is so much fun. What a great town. Here's a car, Judge Paula Manderfield, Court of Appeals. Oh, Flicker the Dragon is coming, Addie's huge. Of course, his sponsor is Art Van Furniture. And he stands 48 feet tall and 22 feet wide and 20 feet long. And tell you, after I'd be walking that much, I'd be dragging myself. <laughs> This bright green and purple helium balloon represents a character from Art Van's Kids Castle, a supervised play area within select stores, and he is guided down the plain route by, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe about a little bit over 20 uh, Art Van associates. And the background, Ed, Flickr was created in June of 1998 and was introduced with the story. Flickr was sent from Dragonland for being too nice. Queen Lacey and King George adopted him as their pet in the kid's castle. He spends his days using his flicker of a flame to help Queen Lacey bake cookies and roast hot dogs for the children. Oh, this is the Black River Boat Club. Yes, the float and its Caribbean flavor represent the boat club as a small piece of paradise on Black River and was established in 1938 on the former Bakersfield property. It looks like this is a, they're having a great time. This looks like a fun group. Dancing. And followed by that boat is another boat there. It's Colonial Woods Missionary Church, which represents the Anchor Children's Ministry and the Sun World Adventure Park. And hundreds of children have enjoyed this vacation Bible school um, at Colonial Woods. This year's theme will help children conquer the future. Sun World Amusement Park is a place where the kids will develop key life skills and which will help them make the world a better place. What's this, up next? This little lighthouse is from the Poor Good, Museum, you? the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, which has been lighting the way for, mari for mariners, mariners? Yes, on mariners. Lake Huron for 183 years. The model on top of that lighthouse features a green light just like the real one, and the light is a green flashing light to help the mariners distinguish the light from other bright shore lights, such as the locomotive headlights that used to pull past the Thomas Edison Depot. And stop by because Lighthouse Bob will take you on a tour Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. What do we have here? Sir. Are it be pirates? Port Huron Museum. The car coming up. All part of the Port Huron Museum, and coming up next we see behind them is the nitros. There they what are, are the dancing. the nitros, Ed? The nitros consist of various all-star cheer and dance teams, and they compete locally in Michigan and all around the United States. The XL nitros are in their fifth year and have already been seven-time national champions and two-time state champions in cheerleading and dance. Good for them. Once again, they offer classes from for ages two years old to 18 years old. These kids are great. I can't believe that they're still tumbling and standing on their hands after being in the parade this long. Oh, and karate. This banner, which I'm trying to read, there's a Taekwondo. The but they have passed blowing it. But I haven't been able to see exactly what it was. Anybody? And here's Tim Wiley for Sheriff. His entourage. He's break a board right now. Look at this. Not Tim Wiley, <gasps> but uh, this Taekwondo guy. Uh, Almost. Yes. 
Maybe he just wanted almost to frighten it. Broke, yeah, <laughs> he almost frightened that board. Now, in this limo, could that be Tim Wiley for uh, sure? It, it's yeah. a very long car. <laughs> Tim has been a police officer for 10 years and is currently a detective for the new Baltimore Police Department. Detective Wiley is also a member of the Michigan State Police Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, and he and his wife, Carrie, reside in the city of St. Clair, where they attend St. Mary's Catholic Church. Tim Another and Carrie Clydesdale. are proud of their, their oh, proud uh, parents of Brendan and Reagan. Sorry. Uh, she, um, have a good one. We'll see everybody. The Wiley entourage has a Clydesdale and a St. Bernard. <laughs> oh, girl. And then those flags that we see down there. Look like they may be the Charles Hammond A A M American Legion, American Legion post. Number eight. But right now, I think Bob has somebody. Bob, your name is. My name's Chris Barbarian. Tom Baker. And what do you gentlemen think of the parade tonight? Wonderful. All these people coming out to see the parade. Biggest turnout I've seen in quite a few years. And your son is in what organization? Port Huron Northern Band, just coming up right Port Huron Northern Band, coming up right down the road here. All right. And uh, do you have any other children here? My two boys over here on the left with their mom. All right. They're in hand. We spoke to them earlier. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be interviewed. Appreciate it very much. Now we see. Vintage baseball. Northern Husky Marching Band, which has earned the first division ratings for their wind ensemble and symphonic band at the State Festival in 2006. The Northern Husky Marching Band is led by band director Eric Sankmajor. Marching machine, and they, we're all ending the parade with the Northern Band. Now those are the sights that I usually see when I'm cooking. <laughs> and yes, they do symbolize. Now, do you know the difference between the red truck and the green truck? Uh, the color? <laughs> no, I. yes, they are two different <laughs> colors, but I Yay. didn't know if they were all supposed to be red or all supposed to be green. Well, of course, they do signify the end of the parade and Besides thanking again Main Street Garage, Signs Plus, and Jets Pizza, we also have to thank Bob Beaton, our man on the street who was out there. And we're going to thank our cameramen, Chris Orell, Jamie Yielding, Sean Went, and E.J. Shea. Graphics, of course, are supplied by Chad Schuler. Our camera grip out there was uh, Curtis Senek. Audio was done by Carl Staffhorse. And our director is none other than... Shelly Senek. Ta-da. So thank you very much again. I'm Edward Senek. Enjoy the rest of Boat Week, everyone. This was a wonderful time. And that was Kathy Thompson. We'll see you again next year. Have a good night. <laughs>